Good morning. Uh, so we are uh, beginning a new topic uh, that is semiconductors. We have already understood the metals, the energy, how it varies the electrons conduction, all those things we have understood. And you also remember how we understood uh, now the resistance, the origin of conductivity, the change in conductivity temperature. So all these things in context of metals we have understood and now we are focusing our attention to uh, another system in the solid state that is semiconductors. So as the name implies semiconductors and the prefix is semi that means the conduction is somewhere uh, intermediate between what is in metals and uh, insulators. Okay, so that's why the word semi comes in. Okay, so the various aspects of semiconductors, the band gap, effective mass, and how we determine whether it's a, what is the nature of carrier, uh, charge carriers, whether it is electron, holes, or all that. So all these things will be discussed. The transitions, uh, yeah. So, uh, very at a very basic level it is the electrical properties that help you distinguish between a metal insulator a semiconductor the criteria of the basis of uh, classification the name that we give uh, conductor insulator semiconductor that is uh, conduction electrical conduction okay and uh, so we know that if you uh, take a metal piece of metal and uh, uh, make a contact with the positively charged uh, so, so positive and negative poles of a battery you know it will conduct electricity but the same is not true when you have take a piece of um, plastic or any other so the plastic that we take is insulator example of insulator and something about similar uh, uh, we cannot say there are certain materials which behave very differently we cannot say very for sure that it will conduct or not conduct because depending on temperature and uh, other conditions their properties is ch uh, changes so these are semiconductors which can be when you con connect with a piece of uh, to the two poles of a battery say uh, take a piece of silicon then it may or may not conduct electricity depending on the temperature of the uh, surroundings temperature and uh, or uh, so depending on temperature it can behave as conductor or insulator that's the intermediate thing that we want and such uh, materials which show conduction change in conductivity with respect to temperature uh, uh, every uh, increase in conductivity when you increase the temperature the conductivity increases uh, these are semiconductors so in terms of conductivity if we define so you have metals at one end at one of the extreme very high conductivity 10 to power 10 uh, ohms inverse cm inverse whereas you have insulators that has conductivity on the order of 10 to power minus 22 so when we talk of uh, a semiconductor they somewhere lie in between these two extremes between these two extremes we have semiconductor anything having intermediate conductivity will be semiconductor so okay so if you so band theory of solids we have just uh, learnt about it how the bands are formed just a moment That is done. Okay. 
so this is uh, what we understand so you have if you have a filled completely filled band and then completely empty band above it and in between you have energy uh, uh, no energy levels are available so that is forbidden region that we see so this is a gap and we have already understood this uh, structure in uh, while discussing metals i also told you about this so so uh, there's, there there is so between two bands if you have a forbidden region there's a region where there's, there's no electrons can be found so that is a forbidden region and the energy gap between the top of the uh, valence band and bottom of the conduction band the empty band that uh, that we can see that is your band gap okay so that we, we have already discussed about the continuum of energy levels in a band so these are things that we already know you don't have to go back to these things again uh, is that okay so the separation between uh, so so uh, you have a conduction band uh, so uh, now you should uh, so the few things that will make it uh, interesting so suppose if you, if you have a silicon having a crystal of 1 cm cube dimensions having cm 1 cm cube so you can think of do you know how many atoms are there it can be calculated it is not difficult atomic mass of silicon is if it is known you know the Avogadro number so you can easily find out how many atoms can be present so divide this uh, mass of uh, yeah atomic so you have density of silicon is this so so total number you can find you can find this by taking it so one meter cube contains 2.3 and so you can uh, in one meter cube you have 2.3 into 10 to the power 3 kg is the mass so one centimeter cube you will have you can find out it is not difficult so once you have found the mass in one cm cube you have 2.3 grams present so divided by atomic mass so you know how many uh, moles are present and then that number of moles multiplied by the atomic uh, sorry Avogadro's number gives you the atoms number of atoms not difficult thing so uh, each so a single silicon piece the one cubic centimeter that you can take uh, so energy levels that you can think of each in electron energy levels is so it is so number so these are the number of atoms so you can expect these many energy levels as well that is uh, so there are so many energy levels that you can think of is just uh, so one comp uh, so the, these are arranged in uh, uh, band uh, that continuum of energy level which is completely filled this is filled band empty band all energy levels are empty no electrons is there and so between uh, so the elect to take uh, so conduction will occur when some of these electrons are excited to the uh, this empty band and so the electrons once they are here they will they have availability of energy levels without any cost of elect, uh, energy so they are uh, so energy levels are available orbitals are available without uh, because the continuum of energy that we have already seen 
So this is the kind of structure. So energy, full valence band, empty conduction band, and the gap. So this is this is the thing that characterizes the basic characteristics of a semiconductor. And the gap is small enough uh, such that if you change the temperature a bit, it will show some of the electrons can be excited to the upper uh, band, this is the conduction band. So, so we, have, we, we already know the full band cannot conduct electricity, neither an empty band. So, fully filled or fully completely empty band. In both cases, we have no conduction. So, in semiconductors, uh, you cannot, if you say at zero Kelvin, you take a semiconductor and try to make contact with a positive and negative poles of a battery, there will be no conduction. It will be absolute insulators. At very low temperature, say zero Kelvin, it will be behaving as insulator. That is no conduction at all. But as the temperature is gradually raised, it is found that uh, the conduction increases gradually. And uh, so that happens because the thermal energy that is uh, kT, you, what is thermal energy? It is the Boltzmann constant times T temperature. So thermal energy, it is, it also represents the average kinetic energy of a molecule or, or atom or in this case the electron. So this energy, that kinetic energy that is possessed on an average by the electron or that is the thermal energy. The thermal energy of the electrons at the top of the full band is lower than the gap. Of course, the gap is at low temperatures, but as the temperature increases, this uh, thermal energy increases and the electrons can, if they, it exceeds the band gap, it can go to the conduction band. So, so if you need to provide some kind of energy to uh, so that the electron sitting at the top of the valence band that is here electron sitting here is should go to this so you need some energy that is equal to uh, this gap energy. Hmm. So, so the electron, then you, so energy can be given in three different ways. Either you can heat it, so that is you are providing thermally, you are exciting the electron. You can uh, light, we have already discussed, electromagnetic radiations. Three, you can just provide the electric field, electric, electric current. So that also we do. So three different ways uh, how you can uh, make an electron sitting at the top of the valence band go to the conduction band. So some kind of energy needs to be given, and this uh, so for that so that the electron goes to goes here, and as it goes here, if the energy is given equivalent to E g, it will the electron will come here and a vacancy will be created which will be called hole. So loss of electron in the conduction valence band, the vacancy that it creates is uh, given opposite sign of it, it is behaves as a, a quasi particle uh, which is called hole having positive charge. Jaldi Ajay Kizir. Okay. So, okay. 
zero zero kelvin uh, so as i told you at zero kelvins electron is sitting at the lowest energy levels possible so they are just the valence band is filled up to the top level and there is no conduction at all because this is empty but as you make uh, provide give some energy the electron will go up to the conduction band leaving and that missing missing electron state the 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 vacancy that is left behind is thought to be uh, the missing electron is is called a hole and that hole is shown here with a positive sign it is it is thought to be behave as a positive positively charged particle so that also electron uh, so both the holes created in the valence band the electrons that are in conduction band both will help you in conduction conducting uh, in conduction both help in conducting conducting the electricity okay so electron moves in the as as the uh, you apply the now if you have, if this is the situation when you have some electrons over here in the in the conduction band after you have provided certain amount of energy then you apply electric field uh, you uh, make a contact to this uh, say it is a silicon crystal which uh, you are now making a contact with the positive poles and negative poles of a battery you will see a conduction so uh, the conduction what are the charge carriers here so electrons move in the conduction band while the holes will move in the valence band so this electrons and holes are the charge carriers so electrons the negative charge carriers the holes are positive charge carriers so the magnitude of charge that we are assigning to the hole and uh, that is h sometimes we denote it as h plus it has same charge as that of the electron the, in terms of magnitude and the sign is different so uh, if <clears throat> so holes will so that's what i was showing you in the previous slide that electrons will continue moving in the valence band sorry electrons uh, uh, holes will continue will move in the valence band and electrons in the conduction band this is conduction band this is valence band so when you apply electric field when you apply uh, that is in practical sense that means you are connecting it to the positive and negative terminals of the battery you will see the current flows so uh, so electrons holes taken together they are the charge carriers of the in the semiconductor the charge carriers are electrons and holes electrons in conduction band and holes in valence band these are your charge carriers that is you need something to carry the charge from one end to the other end of the battery so that so these charge carriers uh, if you if, if i ask you that what are the charge carriers in a metal then you will say the electrons electrons are the charge carrier in metal but in case of semiconductors the charge carriers are electrons as well as holes so holes so uh, because the charge is positive here the behavior will be different it will move in opposite direction to the electrons and so uh, as electrons move in this direction their energy increases whereas the holes if they are moving in the downward direction in the valence band uh, valence band structure their energy increases so it, and uh, so that is they are moving to the higher energy states so the valence band uh, holes as i told you that is h 
plus usually we denote by this sign as the charge carriers in the valence band they contribute to the electron uh, to the current electric current flow of electric current and electrons help you con uh, conduct in the by in the conduction line create current in the conduction line. so hole is a uh, is always to be so electrons can be a free particle that we can think of as we discussed earlier in quantum mechanics also but hole is always it is it you cannot imagine a hole to a, a single hole to exist in a vacuum it is always a bound particle it is only when in the we are discussing a silicon crystal uh, any other semiconductor crystal we talk of holes so it is not a free particle it is a, simply a vacancy that is created when electron leaves the valence band okay and uh, so when you have uh, as we have shown in the previous slide in the picture that through the animation the number of electrons in the conduction band would be equal to the number of holes created in the valence band in a pure uh, semiconductor system that is we call it as intrinsic semiconductors uh, which is which is has no impurity in that in those kind of semiconductors the number of electrons in the conduction band number of holes in the valence band so remember this electrons in the conduction band are to be, the electrons are uh, there in the conduction band only when you give some amount of energy at zero Kelvin, there is nothing in the conduction band. So, so there are so we define uh, based on this kind of uh, this property. We also define semiconductors as intrinsic, extrinsic, or doped. So, intrinsic, uh, uh, sorry, intrinsic uh, or extrinsic semiconductors. Intrinsic means you have. No, no impurity atom present no uh, whereas extrinsic means that you are either in the crystal lattice of a semiconductor you are adding some few amounts of a small proportion of proportion small amount of another at uh, another element which can increase the number of holes or the number of electrons so example you have uh, for example in a silicon crystal you can think of adding phosphorus so it, it has uh, contribute to one more electron excess of electron five uh, because and you can also think of uh, adding aluminium which can then increase the number of holes in the valence band so that will be something different we will be we will come back to that Thing later the extrinsic, extrinsic doping and extrinsic semiconductors so there are two carriers uh, and these electrons uh, in the electrons in the conduction band and uh, holes in the valence band these two make uh, other uh, other uh, 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 charge carriers in a semiconductor so after the transition this is the situation in a valence band some of the electrons have gone to the conduction band so this top level appears empty which is now we are uh, assigning as uh, so it can conduct electric current so the conduction is uh, is due to both the electrons and holes and that's why sometimes we also say that a semiconductor is a bipolar conductor so now you have uh, once the excitation is done you will have partly filled conduction band and a partly filled valence band so this is uh, a valence band so yeah the question that we can ask ourselves how can how can you excite the electrons to the so that they make up to this 
so either you excite thermally or apply electric field that is connect to the battery or you give a uh, radiation just as uh, light so we are more familiar with uh, providing elect this electromagnetic radiation that is the, the let the sunlight fall upon the sample and the electrons are, can be excited so uh, all these situations can lead to uh, partly filled conduction band, partly filled valence band, uh, starting from initially a completely filled valence band and empty valence, uh, conduction band. So, so this kind of situation uh, that can come. So these are different excitation. Uh, so which excitation mechanism we? Uh, so one of the excitation mechanism has to be used to reach that state when you expect a conduction in the semiconductor. Either increasing the temperature, you excite them, you, I, or you provide electric current, uh, or you provide light, light source. You must have a light source. So these are three different ways you can do this uh, to achieve C conductivity. So the thermal energy, if you try to calculate uh, at room temperature, so 300 kelvins is the room temperature. Kt comes out to be on the order of 25 milli electron volts, 25 MeV, which is small, very small. So excitation will depend upon; it will be proportional to this uh, Kt term that we have just seen, Kt, and the gap exponential e to the power so e to the power minus band gap y so this factor determines your that uh, when you <coughs> if increasing the temperature uh, how at a given temperature or say at a room temperature as compared to a zero kelvin situation how many more car carriers are created in the conduction band how, and if you keep continued heating the sample at what rate the population will change in the conduction band so that you can achieve conduct conductivity so uh, so this is okay so this is a very important term that gives you that idea so room temperature this is uh, 25 mev very small it is very small and only a few electrons can be promoted to the conduction band hmm. conduction band so So it is sometimes possible that uh, by using temperature you can the electrons can be excited to the conduction band and uh, so as the temperature increases you can have more and more electrons going into the so the excitation of electrons that is we are talking about is a function it is a it strongly depends on the temperature second electric field for very small electric field the mechanism does promote electrons such as in silicon if you are talking about silicon or gallium arsenide because uh, the energy required is much more uh, on the order of uh, so when you provide an electric field of 10 to the power 18 volts per meter so this is a very high electric field that we are talking about then that will equivalent of providing an energy of one electron volt so the field required is very very large in that sense so the use of electric field as an excitation to excite the electrons 
is not useful need to promote semiconductors uh, electromagnetic radiation we have seen it is uh, one of the best ways to promote electron from valence band to conductor so for example if we take an uh, silicon silicon crystal it has band gap of 1.1 ev you convert into lambda wavelength you will find that it is comes out to be around uh, 1.1 micrometer so this is the near infrared so you need a near ir uh, near ir near infrared light uh, that so it is a very very low energy less than the visible light so visible ka range aapka 600 se uh, kitna 700 nanometer tak hota hai 400 to 700 is the visible and beyond that is the near ir so near ir is a uh, longer wavelength uh, just above the visible where the visible spectrum ends okay so near infrared light of uh, 1100 nanometer or this is 1100 nanometers if you can remember so this is nir near ir light source you know visible range of visible light is 400 to 700 nanometers so as compared to this you are requiring even lower energy lower uh, lower energy in case of a silicon so this uh, so this is simple calculations if you can do that is shown here the wavelength of light that is electro so longer than uh, sorry photons have uh, the wavelength must be 1.1 micron or less so so that was excitation it the reverse thing can also happen that uh, when electron is already in conduction band it can uh re it can come back to the ground state or in another way we say that the vacancy it has left that is the holes so this is uh, the hole uh, so the electron recombines with the hole and the energy is given out in form of light so that is In, in terms of photon some energy is given out and this is the so the reverse of the absorption so this is emission of light that was absorption of light in this case you are getting you get to see a glow around the substance where this happens so that is the emission of light so this so if you are uh, so you, so you have to be very choosy very selective in your when you are trying to make uh, an uh, an led or lasers you need to choose uh, certain types of semiconductors which have very good property of uh, light emission they must have a good light matter interaction the band gap must be in the order of visible light so that visible colors you can see the Uh, white light emission green or so that visible light emission can be seen so that is what we look for the certain more thing that we will learn about it you know, thing so this uh, curvature that kind of thing that is shown this is the you remember e versus k in the e versus k graph you got this kind of parabolic curve so that is what is shown here uh so the magnitude of band gap is so this is uh, on the order of few electron volts in case of semiconductors so <clears throat> so the magnitude of band gap determines the difference between insulators and conductors so what we have learned also thermal is is not a useful way to promote an electron to conduction band so sometimes you might have to reach if you are hitting it as the substance starts melting 
so that is not a good way you would try to avoid that uh, so best way is uh, elect uh, this is so what we have so even very high electric field is also unable to promote electrons so what is the best way light we provide the suitable ele uh, electromagnetic radiation of a suitable wavelength and then you can have a very easy in a very uh, same at room temperature you can have a large carrier concentration that is a large number of electrons in the conduction band a large number of holes in the valence band that can be created so that is a happy situation so we all know what is uh, uh, so. So we already know about the metals, uh, this overlap of bands that happen and uh, the reason of conductivity we have already discussed again so I am not going to that again. So in contrast to that we have uh, behavior in the semiconductor which is different and uh, then we come to this point of uh, Effective mass is a concept that is very important in case of uh, semiconductors. So imagine a free electron in vacuum, free electron in vacuum. So when you apply electric field, say one electron, one volt, it moves with certain velocity. But when you take the same electron, imagine the same electron which is now in a crystal, that is uh, a free electron uh, unbound unbound and this one is a bound state a bound so an electron which is bound to a some uh, a, a periodic potential of the crystal the, the lattice uh, you have periodical arrangement of uh, atoms and each of these atoms has nucleus which is positively charged so you have a periodic potential uh, and so this electron in uh, when it is not free you have uh, uh, it is bound to that crystal it is present bound to that crystal system you apply the same amount of electric field say one in one volt now the velocity the change in velocity of electron will be different it will behave very differently so what should be the mass uh, what is the uh, so what is this so this is what we or uh, if you have a free electron at rest we know that this is the 10 to the power minus 31 kg is the rest mass of the electron okay so that is for a, an unbound situation so so it is like uh, when you are lifting a something heavy object and you feel the full weight against the gravity but so if something uh, if someone gives a hand pushes it up you feel less force and you can pick up easily in a similar way electrons in a crystal will be behaving if something is pulling it inside then you will feel very find it much more difficult to take that electron away on the other hand if something is pushing it outside to move it out of the crystal its repulsion is more then you will feel a less force is required to get that electron out of the crystal so that is so that apparent feel that you say that is what we are talking about here effective mass so that is different uh, so the so same magnitude of electric field applied in the two different conditions in vacuum and in the crystal inside the crystal the electrons accelerate at different rate so as i told you the different uh, periodic potential inside the crystal changes the thing and you have you feel like it is much heavier or it has become much lighter as compared to as uh, a free electron so that change in that uh, thing is called the effective mass uh, so the mass that you will feel is uh, 
in, in, in will be different for, as compared to vacuum. Uh, let me put it in another way. Let me take a fresh slide and I tell you at a very fundamental level, uh, we can also understand the effective mass in a very different context. I can just put it like this. So you know uh, Newton's uh, uh, law. You are familiar with the Newton's law. You are familiar with this. You know that the force is proportional to acceleration. So of uh, for free electron. So this is. Uh, So force will be proportional to electrons. So, and uh, when you remove the proportionality constant, this uh, constant times a, and this constant was called m, the mass. Okay. So this is so this proportionality constant was called mass. But this thing applies to uh, a free particle at rest. A free particle system uh, which is at rest. Now we are here we are having a different situation. Uh, so when the particle so this is unbound so this the Newton's law that you are visualizing here is for an unbound state unbound state when it is there is no uh, attraction or repulsion from any other th system now consider the electron in the crystal system where you have so still so for a bound state you will still have the force Newton's law is still valid the force is proportional to the acceleration but the proportionality constant that you will put now is something different it is represented by m star which is this is rest mass this is effective mass M star. We are putting a star here. If we to distinguish, make it distinct from the other one. And so this particular thing that we have just made out. So this is applicable to a bound state. In contrast, any bound state will have. So so uh, the. Newton's law is still valid, so you have to visualize in this way, very different way, that force was proportional to acceleration and the pro constant of proportionality was given a name and we called it mass. That was a free particle. Now when we have this similar situation when the particle is not free, it is bound. When you apply certain force, it will move. To what extent it moves, what, to what is the velocity, acceleration, uh, that will be different. So. Uh, the proportionality remains, it is still valid, the force is still proportional to the acceleration but the proportionality constant is different for a bound system and that is represented by effective mass. So this is a bound state that is example of that is uh, an electron in a crystal. crystal lattice. So that is what we are having situation over here. So this is at very fundamental level. So a bound state will behave very differently as compared to a free unbound pa particle. And so the so so this mass that we were treating uh, mass uh, it will be we have to visualize it as a simple a constant that was proposed that was came into picture while uh, understanding this Newton uh, law, this uh, uh, laws of motion. So that was a proportionality constant, and the proportionality constant is now different because of the situation is different. 
the electrons uh, the particle is feeling forces whether it's repulsion or attraction from the surroundings and so the proportionality constant will be different and it will be called effective mass so that's how we now understand the effective mass that's the concept uh, if i have to take so electric field applied to in different situation in vacuum or in a crystal for the electron free electron a bound electron behaves differently and so if we understand from that point of view that mass was nothing but a proportionality constant so when it is at rest and when it is uh, unaffected by there is nothing in the surroundings it is free electron unbound then the proportionality constant was m naught and now it is m star when it is a, it is a bound state so this uh, electron that we um, that moving inside a crystal will have a different uh, kind of behavior for the same amount of force applied so for the same amount of electric field applied and the when you write the, uh, this, this, we want to describe the motion of that electron we use this uh, altered mass that is effective mass as the term which is uh, as i told you that you will have to look at it look at it in a very different way so electrons as it uh, so this, this is the situation that uh, i already described this so i'm not just uh, going through this not totally free they are affected so in some places there will be attraction in some other place in the crystal there will be repulsion and so from place to place also there will be slight change in the effective mass so we usually talk of uh, an average e effective mass in a crystal uh, so we use this uh, okay so effective mass how can we define so e, we are familiar with the dispersion relation e versus k e on the x on the y axis k on the x axis and so uh, you are also you also know already what is the momentum so this k e versus k curves also tells you about the momentum at different positions so that is important right so e versus k you know about energy so if you take a second derivative so first derivative will be uh, if you if you take this energy and uh, take the first derivative of de by dk and d2e by dk you'll find that the second derivative is equal to h cross square by 2m not very difficult to see this what you will see that if you have de by dk what is this uh, h cross square by 2m into 2k now if you have to differentiate this a second time with respect to small k small k then it should be what h cross so 2 is cancelled here h cross square by uh, m simple so this is what we are talking about first derivative second derivative is s cross square root m so now if you try to find the mass it is uh, pretty easy you sub so h cross square uh, so so using this equation the mass that you are getting is the effective mass so when you take this into account the variation of energy with respect to k k is the wave vector wave vector it tells you about the determines momentum in a crystal so momentum and uh, uh, that from this graph second derivative of d2e by dk square you are getting uh, so this h cross square so what is this 
we are talking about effective mass which is equal to what equal to h cross square by the curvature so by the curvature of e versus k so we are having as the effective mass is nothing but h cross square by curvature so second derivative is taken as first derivative is slope second derivative is curvature of e versus k right so this h cross square by the curvature so curvature of the e versus k curve tells you about the mass effective mass okay so looking at the picture you can see that effective mass is uh, positive or negative it can be positive or negative so you have uh, uh, depending on the different part of the slope uh, different part of the uh, parabolic curve you can have somewhere it will be positive somewhere it will be negative so all of this is possible okay so it is a, a variable as you look at the graph at different positions you will have different values of the curvature and so effective mass is variable and it is a uh, you can so effective mass is found by this double derivative which is uh, so curvature for the e versus k curve uh, so so uh, because all the semiconductor do not have perfectly parabolic band structure so, so in that is a simplification the parabola that we represent but usually they have a different uh, uh, there are some more complications in that so uh, so different atomic spacing in each direction will give you different effective masses that is possible corresponding to crystal directions so we uh, in xrd treatment we in the discussion on xrd we also talked about crystal directions so crystal directions so in different crystal direction you have different effective masses and what we usually refer to is that we call take an average of that and say that average effective mass of this system is this uh, certain value so that average we are just showing over here so effective mass of uh, effective mass of uh, this electron in silicon is given by this effect this is the effective mass of for electron and this is the effective mass of holes this is for electrons and electrons and this is for holes so it can be different so uh, compared to its rest mass rest mass of the system how it has changed in a crystal lattice so you can see the range that we are getting in uh, to, this is this uh, table is just to give you an idea that uh, as compared to rest mass how, what is the how, what is the range of effective mass you can get so in uh, in silicon which we discuss more often it is 1.1 times so it is greater it has, whereas for holes it is if in terms of uh, mass electron it is the mass of hole will be effective mass of hole is uh, treated to be 0.5 that is half of the electron's rest mass in a silicon system it will be different in case of germanium uh, gallium arsenide so each of the system has different effective masses for holes average effective masses for so all this comes from calculations of density of states e versus k curve so uh, so density of states curve the e versus k curve these are giving you much more greater information this is what the point that i always told you earlier that if you are plotting e versus k not only you are talk, you can get to know about uh, the uh, transitions that are possible uh, 
also you get to know about the effective masses, the change in effective mass that happens at different positions, uh, different situations. So these are the effective masses. So you can see it can uh, be less. In gallium arsenide, we have 0 0.067. So effective mass is much less as compared to effective mass of uh, risk mass of electron. So higher than the risk mass, less than the risk mass. So it is higher. So the two things are contrast. Uh, so not higher. We should write larger than than the rest mass electron and here less than the rest mass in gallium arsenide. So this is the situation that we have for effective masses. So electron and holes, uh, so we all treat them as waves when we behave as, we now know that they are, behave as a standing wave in bound, any bound state you have standing wave when you have any part. Electrons uh, or holes, we can write wave functions that describe their behavior and we can find the de Broglie wavelengths. To understand that behavior, <coughs> mm. so in these electrons, uh, okay. So, okay. So we will continue our discussion from this uh, onwards. Uh, I think what is the time now? Seven fifty. So yes, I uh, need to. Okay, so we'll talk about this. Uh, so this is the point that <coughs> so we you can talk of the momentum of the electron h cross k k h cross two pi by lambda to lam is the vector. If uh, so, these are the standing waves. Two pi is also called uh, yeah k is the constant. So these are the way we relate to all these things. Okay. E versus K diagram is important in determining the crystal momentum and uh, momentum of the and the effective mass. So there are certain things P square by two m and uh, so. So you have equation one in lambda must be equal to two t. Uh, okay, we'll continue this discussion tomorrow. We'll try to dis more on the effective mass and how how they affect the properties. Okay. Thank you. We'll meet again.